interested in sports? Uh, to an extent, football, but I'm more interested in playing it rather than watching it. Ever seen in the crowds people are holding up a sign that says John 316? Yes, I've seen it plenty of times while watching WWF. What is John 316? I am not sure. Yeah, it's a Bible verse actually. It's for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What do you think that means? I assume it's regarding Jesus? Yeah, on the cross. And it says, shall not perish. What do you think that's referring to? Shall not go away. Shall not die. Okay, do you think it's true? I can't say it's not true, and I really can't say it is true because I'm very uninformed. Anyone can be good and anyone can be bad. Um, so what are you? I am good. <laughs> I am definitely good. Do you think there's an afterlife? I sure do hope so, but I don't think so. So let's say if you are good. I'm going to use a standard that you may be familiar with, the Ten Commandments. Yes, sir. How many lies do you think you've told in your life? A lot. Ever stolen something? Yes, sir. Ever used God's name in vain? Yes, sir. Jesus said, if you look with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Yeah. Have you had sex before marriage? Yep. So, Anthony, I'm not judging you, but you're not a good person. You're like the rest of us. By your own admission, you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, fornicating, adulterer at heart. We've looked at four of the Ten Commandments. If God judges you by the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, you're going to be innocent or guilty? Guilty. Heaven or hell? Hell. Does that concern you? No. Why not? Because um, that's based on his judgment, not mine. That's the standard you're going to be judged with. If you go into a court and you're a criminal and the judge makes a judgment, you don't say, I'm not accepting that because that's your standards, not mine. A criminal doesn't set his own standard of judgment and neither do we with God. If you hate someone, the Bible says you're a murderer. No amount of good works can wash away our sins. It's like saying to a judge, judge, I know I shot the guard and robbed a bank, but uh, I'll give people the shirt off my back. And he's not going to take that into account. No, sir. Good works won't wash away your crimes in a court of law, and it won't work on Judgment Day. You said earlier on that you hope is everlasting life. The only way you can find it is to acknowledge your sins and say, man, this is serious. I've sinned against God. He's proclaimed the death sentence on me. Death is God's warning that hell is real, and I don't want to go to hell. That's what Jesus meant when he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you die in your sins and come under the justice of God, you'll be damned and I would hate you to go to hell. It horrifies me, the very thought of you, Anthony, ending up in hell justly condemned for your sins horrifies me because he, God's seen your thought life. He's seen those sexual imaginations you thought nobody saw. God saw them and every time you sin you store up his wrath. Do you know what God did for guilty sinners so they wouldn't have to go to hell? No, sir. Well, we've already looked at it in depth, but you missed it. 2,000 years ago, God became a human being, a perfect, sinless man who gave his life on a cross to take the punishment for the sin of the world. You and I broke God's law, the Ten Commandments. That's the moral law. Jesus came and paid the fine in full. On the cross, he said a very strange thing just before he died. Three words, he cried out, It is finished. Why do you think he said that? Um, he did what he had to do, pretty much. Right. You're saying the debt is paid. If you're in court and someone pays the fine, even though you're guilty, the judge can let you go. He can say, boy, Anthony is as guilty as sin, but someone's paid his fine. He's out of here. He can extend mercy and satisfy justice because the fine is paid by another. That's what happened on the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes or trusts in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus rose from the dead on the third day, and if you repent and trust in him, like you trust a parachute, God will forgive your sins, dismiss your case, commute your death sentence, let you live forever because of that death and resurrection of the Savior. I know so many people who claim to be good people, and they do a bunch of... And... I know someone like that. Yeah, and... They're <laughs> sitting right in front of me. <laughs> yeah, but I don't ask for forgiveness. These people are faking it. They don't fool anyone but themselves. If they make you mad, they're going to make God mad also. And the Bible says hypocrites will end up in hell. And you don't want to end up in hell with hypocrites if you so despise them. The difference between you and me at the moment is that I'm like a man who's on a plane 10,000 feet up. You're standing next to me. I'm wearing a parachute. You're not. I'm not better than you. I'm just better off because I've got the parachute when I jump. Death is actually a, an arresting officer that's going to drag you before the judge of the universe 
You're going to face God in your court case, and hell is God's prison, and there's no parole. You know, think of these things that surround us, these laws that are frightening. If you just fall 20 feet off a roof onto the ground, gravity will smash every bone in your body. You know, if you touch electricity, it's invisible, but it's going to kill you. If lightning strikes, you'll kill you. All around us are harsh laws. Well, they're nothing compared to the law of sin and death, the one you have to face on Judgment Day, the one you've violated. The soul that sins, it shall die. God means what he says about sin. It's very serious. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. Thieves will not inherit God's kingdom. Fornicators, adulterers, blasphemers, and those that have hated have committed murder in their hearts. So you've got a multitude of sins and you desperately need God's forgiveness. And I love you enough to tell you the truth. I'm saying, Anthony, please at least think about this. Think about your, your death, when it's going to come. Think about how fearful it's going to be if you die alone without the Savior. What a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And think about what Jesus did on the cross. You know, if I stepped in front of a, a guy who's firing a bullet at you and took the bullet, it should break your heart that I'd love you that much to give my life. Yeah. That's what Jesus did for sinners. He gave his life. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes or trusts in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Will you at least think about this? Yes, sir. That's a um, very, very amazing information that you just gave me right now let me tell you something about information that most people don't realize a man got on a bus he was blind and when he got on the bus someone on the bus stood up and gave him his seat was that a good thing to do yeah i would say it's a good thing it was actually very bad the man lost his job because he did it he was the bus driver oh i see what seat man <laughs> gave him a seat and that's that's how information can change us one moment that was a good thing next minute that was really bad so information can transform us and the bible says my people are destroyed through lack of information or lack of knowledge so i've given you knowledge today and i want you to think about it let it change your way of thinking about life and death and god and all these things you've all these gifts you've got the gift of music of You've got taste buds, you've got hearing to enjoy that music, eyes to enjoy the beauty of the sky and the sound of the birds and a brain to think and the freedom of this country. And now God offers you everlasting life, so you owe God everything you've got. The air in your lungs comes by His goodness. And so you're, you're commanded to love Him with heart, mind, soul and strength, but instead you've used His name as a cuss word and lived in rebellion to Him. And so if you turn to Him, He'll forgive you, cleanse you, and you'll pass from death to life. You've not got just my word on it, you've got God's word on it. Okay, yes. Uh, per se, God gave me all these gifts, gave us all these gifts to see, smell, breathe, love, all that stuff. What about the people that don't have it? You mean the dead people? No, we're talking about the people who are walking, who can't see, who can't smell, who are in hospitals, the innocent children around the world who are starving, um, people who just don't deserve the way they're living. Well, let's take it even further. What about cancer in children? What about all the suffering? You don't have to go very far. Just walk 100 yards from here and there's someone in a home suffering mother's lost her child or something like that all these things happen because we live in a fallen creation god made man and woman perfect in the beginning there was no disease pain suffering or death when man sinned against god according to the bible then came god's judgment on the earth earthquakes diseases hurricanes tornadoes these are diseases in the soil mosquitoes with diseases in them and all these cancerous diseases show us that things aren't right with mankind and God and it should make us say wow you know if you're on a plane and the plane suddenly doesn't does a nose dive and and it kills people you know it goes into an air pocket and a lot of people get killed the thing you should say is what went wrong something's wrong and that's what you should be saying with all the suffering around us something's wrong and the Bible gives the explanation it says we've sinned against God we're enemies of God in our mind through wicked works we use his name as a cuss word we're rebels we're unthankful we're ungrateful and yet God's rich in mercy and he'll forgive us and grant us everlasting life because of his kindness. That makes sense? Yes, sir. Anything else? No, it sounds pretty, sounds pretty straightforward. Do you have a Bible at home? No, sir. This is my home. <laughs> this is your home? You're living? Yes, sir. Yeah. We're talking in your trunk? Yeah, we're talking in my bedroom with a very awesome dog, by the way. <laughs> Thanks for talking. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much.